sense because it's 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 just a different type type, type of kind of same with the office um you know you have a you know the office started you had all these people that really nobody ever heard of steve carell when before that show started nobody had ever heard of him and you just put these people together and um and just have them interact with each other and it feels a little bit more genuine it's funny because steve carell recently said on the record that he doesn't think, because people, I guess, have been pushing for them to bring the office back or make another um, version of it or whatever. And he's on, gone on the record recently saying that he doesn't think what they got away with on the office back when they made it would fly now. Do you mm. agree with that or do you disagree? Uh, I think, it, well, personally, I think it's a, it, I don't think it's a good idea to, to, uh, to bring it back because it was different then. People didn't know what to make of it and people, it, it, it made some people uncomfortable because they really didn't understand it because we were used to a different type of comedy. We weren't used to these, you know, these kind of these characters that were weird and, and they were from a different, um, you know, they just from a different background and it wasn't a nice, happy little story that wraps up like traditional sitcoms. It was just a lot of dysfunction. That's the word that I was really looking for earlier with, with uh, 30 Rock. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of dysfunction. And so, uh, and that's really kind of life, what life is in a way. That's what made, um, Married with Children and Roseanne, such big shows, because um, they were they were kind of dysfunctional and, and a lot of people related to it. And but then you had the other side uh, during that time during the 80s, where you had Cosby, which was the first time that we really saw black people in a real positive light and people, you know, money and going to private schools and and living in nice places. So there was just these different types of of comedies really kind of emerging during those the mid 80s um, but I would say that uh, that the office I don't think I, yeah I don't think it would fly the way it would uh, because I think the office probably became more popular in syndication than it did during the time that it was on because when it was on not that many people really watched it you know it wasn't a huge it was really just kind of comedy nerds or these you know these these kind of quirky little people, I don't know who they were, they watched it. I mean, I watched it, but, but only because I worked on it. <laughs> but, but, um, but, the, um, but I remember one day in particular, um, <laughs> and I think partly why Steve said this was uh, one day, um, it was like season five and Steve and I were sitting on the set and Steve said, Ken, how long do you think this show is gonna go? And, I, and, that, and by that time, Steve, it became like a movie star and everybody wanted him. I was, I, my career blew up because of, you know, uh, me working on the show. People literally would say, if you can get Steve Carell to do this movie, you know, we'll do a movie about a lampshade. It doesn't matter because right. he was just, <laughs> because he was so hot. But, um, but Steve was, one day we were sitting on the set and Steve said, um, Steve said, um, how many more years do you think we'll do this show? He, I said, as long as you as you want to do it. And he just his head just dropped because he was already exhausted yeah. from from doing TV and because TV is a very grueling schedule. And then doing movies on his hiatus, um, and he had young kids. So uh, I think maybe in part I'm just I'm, you know, I'm not speaking for Steve, but I think in part that's one of the reasons because I don't think personally. I don't think The Office is The Office without Steve Carell. Right. No, it yeah. definitely yeah. is not. Yeah, and I don't think and you could get Steve back on TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's like blown. And now they're like putting these pictures out of him where he's looking like a snack. Like you never even seen him look that handsome. Yeah. Like, no, because he, he's like still the geek from 40 year old version. I love titties. Yeah. Like, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so now he's like this so funny guy. He's been in so many funny movies. And yeah. like, yeah, he's, he's really blown up. So yeah. I get that. Yeah. So you mentioned this. Um, and that is the schedule, right? When mm -hmm. you're working on a television show as opposed to a movie, mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned that it's like a very grueling schedule. So for one episode of Blackish, how long does it take you guys to work through it and, and film it and get everything done? Well, uh, if Tracy's not in the scene, it takes, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, it takes, uh, it takes um, well, there's prep for me. There's a prep week. So it takes two weeks to actually do a single camera comedy. So uh, it takes, um, it, we're in prep. So during my prep week, uh, basically I work 
you know, I don't know, maybe not even eight hours a day, but you just have a series of meetings and you have location scouts, you have um, prop meetings, you have wardrobe meetings, you have production meetings, you have um, tone meetings, uh, you have uh, 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 table reads. So you have all this stuff during the week. And so the script is being prepped that week to be able to be shot the following week. So the, the following week, uh, basically Monday to Friday, um, you're shooting basically 12 hours a day. So you come in at seven and you're wrapping at about seven or eight. Um, mm. So, but in today's um, landscape, you know, the, the, the studios, network television isn't doing that great right now. I think we can all kind of agree to that. Mm. Um, probably nobody in here really watches the three networks or maybe consistently there's more in, there might be more interesting stuff on you know on you know the cable or streaming channels and so therefore the 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 numbers are really low so therefore the studios uh, are trying to push back and save money so it's be, really become a, become an economic thing uh, with the network so um, so now we're doing 10 hour days we very rarely do 14 hour days 15 hour days 16 hour days like you used to hear in the back in the in the, in the in the, in, the, in the past, maybe one hour dramas might go a little longer, but typically half hour comedies, they try to really kind of contain your day and it's, but it, and it's all about money. So uh, I'd say between 10 and 12 hour days we normally do. And, um, and so normally we can complete a, um, a episode in five days with 10 to 12 hours per day. Wow, it's a long time. Um, so you know I'm gonna ask about it. Mm -hmm. And that is the infamous episode of Blackish that they would not air. Ah, Were you a part of that? I was not. Mm -hmm. um, I know just a little bit about it. Um, it had to do with the kneeling and, um, and Kaepernick, um, but I don't know what the episode was about. Uh, I, I, you know, like once I'm I'm gone, I might be do two, maybe three episodes a year of Blackish. Um, but uh, once I'm gone, I really. Um, I really, I'm not privy to the, the information on the show. Um, you know, I still watch it, but I know that it was a very important show to Kenya and, uh, and, to, and to Peter, um, the other writer. Um, and so we all know what, you know, kind of happened. Yeah. And subsequently, uh, he left, you know. So, uh, but I don't know, I don't know what the show is about, though. I, I want to see it. You know. Yeah, <laughs> we all are hoping. I guess Kenya said in an interview when he did that big interview where he kind of like let it all out. Um, he said he he doesn't want the episode to be leaked because he knows he'll be blamed for it, um, which is heavy because he was trying to tell a story that's important and significant to black people. It's timely. It's happening right now. Um, do you feel like networks kind of impede that type of progress of us being able to tell genuine because like blackish they've touched on a lot of different things for that sure. i feel like are important yeah. for us for black people so it was strange to me that they would shy away from that right like they even mm -hmm. did the one slavery episode that looked like schoolhouse rock and mm -hmm. it was like so it was like with the Juneteenth? Roots. yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. and so it's like to me it was weird mm -hmm. that they would shy away from that do you think that networks are still afraid to like genuinely address these kind of issues? Um, it's hard to say. It's hard to say because every network is different, but ABC seems to be a little bit more open. But I think in the wake of the, this whole Roseanne thing um, that happened, uh, I think that had maybe had something to do with, uh, with that episode. You know, that episode, because it was a hot political topic at the time, the whole kneeling. Um, and so, I think they were, uh, I think personally, I think that was afraid of backlash of that particular thing in the wake of them just, because uh, right before that is when they canceled Roseanne mm -hmm. or they fired Roseanne. So the network was kind of reeling and trying to figure it out and what politically, because at the end of the day, the advertisers are the ones that, that, give, that pay, pay the money. So if you have advertisers backing out, you can't, it's hard to make your show. Because, you know, like in, in light, a lot of shows now, like in Blackish, for instance, um, I shot an episode a couple of weeks ago and, you know, we had to Buick, Buick, you know, we had to make sure we saw Buick, this car full screen and, you know, and, and that's been going on for a while. 
you know, for different shows. And as a director, I'm asked to feature show, you know, they get a little ridiculous sometimes. Can you show the, show the car and then show the, how the back seat slides and the, and, the, and this happens and the trunk opens up, you know, and it, you know, it's ridiculous. It's like making a commercial, but that's what network television is becoming now. You know, they, 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 they just have this, you know, like smart water, you know, <laughs> Cherry Coke Zero. <laughs> right. So, so, um, so uh, that's what it's really become because they're just struggling. It's it's just very expensive to make a, a half hour comedy. Um, I used to produce, so I was privy to the to the budgets, and it's pretty amazing. I mean that the the strides that they go to to save money and to move money around, and so it's it's. Uh, it has a lot to do with that, and I think, and I think, um, you know, it's unfortunate because it was what, what's really unfortunate about that situation is because they approved the script. ABC approved the script. They said, "Let's shoot the script." They turned the script, you know, they turned the, the the episode in, and then they decided not to do it. I think that's what really kind of bothered Kenya because if you didn't want to do it, you read it, you know what it was about. Why'd you let? Why'd you? Why'd we spend all this money and hard, or you know, hard, you know, time doing this? All this time doing it if we weren't going to air it. So I think um, that was really unfortunate.